Hello there, this is Tamil, and today's video is about secret features in Clip Studio Paint. And uh, even after using for five years of Clip Studio Paint, almost every day, I still found some features that I just didn't know about, and I really wanted to share them with you. Um, so hopefully this video will be super helpful um, to you. Please share it if you find it useful. Um, otherwise, let's just get started. Alrighty, so we have Clip Studio Paint open. And uh, this is an old painting I made. I made a video about her, actually, if you want to check it out. Um, otherwise, we can just start with a quick tutorial, quick tips. Uh, my first thing that I really love and I really want to show to everyone who uses Clip Studio Paint is uh, this top panel right here. You can edit this a lot. And my favorite part uh, is that not just you can use like a bunch of functions and just drop stuff in there, but you can also drop your favorite brushes. So. For example, I use the G pen all the time. I can just drag it and then put it right there. And now here, it's there at all times. I don't have to worry about this ever again. And same goes for colors. So let's say I'm working on a very specific color or a comic book and it ne needs to use a very specific color all the time. Uh, I can just select whatever color I want. So let's say I just want to pick this. And uh, what you want to do is uh, hold with your finger so the pen is not going to work, but if you hold with your finger, you can just do add drawing color, boop. And now it's going to be in this panel at all times. And in order to delete it, you can also hold. And then here gonna be delete. Just like that, you have your panel uh, customizable and uh, obviously be careful with this. <laughs> you don't wanna delete too much stuff um, or add too much stuff, but that's my favorite functional um, ever in Clip Studio Paint, it makes it so convenient to just gather everything that I want, like in this little area. Alrighty, so the next function is also pretty awesome. It has to do with 3D uh, models. So, for example, I have a head and I really love how it looks and I really enjoy it. But if I want to make it like a little bit more masculine, for example, if you go into settings, this little gear icon, you're going to see a head model and you're going to see these presets that are going to be in Clip Studio Paint. And you can actually push this proportion to be closer to the image that you see. So you can mix and match. Not only that, you can uh, mix and match different ones. So if I want like a little bit more masculine, but also a little bit more, you know, super thin, kind of like <laughs> vampire looking. And then I can do 50-50%, for example. And then in here, you're gonna see facial features. You're gonna see different, like let's say height of eyes, right? height of eyes lower or higher, or rotation, or size of the eyes. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Mm, for example, lowering the ears. There's so many cool things in here that you can customize specifically for your character. And you can obviously save this as a registered material uh, for later use. And you can just drop uh, it on any other model, which is super amazing. And the same goes for the 3D models of characters too. So there's going to be a little button right there. And if you just click it, you're going to see different options in here. And uh, you can adjust specific parts. So for example, if I go to shoulder, I can make the shoulder smaller or wider. Um, or you can just click this button and then it's just kind of like a general um, change. So for example, a person can be thinner or like a little bit bigger. Uh, if you switch to male, <laughs> you can make them like super, super buff. Um, and then if you go left, no fatness, uh, and they're, they're just like anime character like on steroids and just hoo And um, you know, you can adjust the shoulders even bigger like this, but be, be very careful because it looks super, super goofy, like super quick. But um, that's what uh, I would recommend messing around with. And you can obviously save this too for later use. And I think it's really awesome um, function um, that Clip Studio Paint added. The next function is gonna be auto action and auto action is really really awesome if you know how to use it uh, it's going to be window auto action and uh, in here you can see a lot of default ones in here that are already coming with clips to the paint for you just to test it out and uh, for example create a toning layer of half tone dots and if you don't know what auto action is it's basically repeated steps that are going to be um, used from the action of how you set it up so I want to play this and it's going to be a little button right there, which is play. 
and it created a dot tone paper for us already with this frequency, the specific numbers, with the color mode, etc., etc. So if you want to save time on a very specific task that you do a lot of times, this is like a perfect tool for that specifically. So you can see it already created the layer and in here, I'm just drawing and it's already creating um, the dotted uh, effect tone. And just to show you what this is capable of, you can go into here and it's gonna be create a new action, fill my favorite color and click done. So now we have this folder and then we click the record, the little red button. And I'd say, I wanna say a um, new layer and I do select, select all, and then you want to do a specific color that is on my mind at all times. So for example, a pink color, I love pink. And I click OK, and I click fill, and then I click deselect, and then I can set the layer to, let's say, overlay. And then I can do 50% opacity, perfection. So now I can click stop and anytime I want to reuse this, for example, just to see how it looks on my character with the pink overlay, I can just click this button, play, and it's going to do it for me without me even trying to like go back to all the settings and filling and all that stuff. Isn't that amazing? I really love this um, function. It really saves me a lot of time. So I highly recommend start using auto action. And the next tip is pretty simple, just a lot of people don't know about it, but if you have a lot of layers and you want to specifically find a thing on the canvas, sometimes it takes a lot of time, but a quick and easy way to do this is go into operation and in here you will see uh, different tools and you want to select the select layer and this tool will allow us to select specific parts of an image. So let's say I want to select the snow. And then if I go to layers, you can see that it selected the snow. And now I just click on it. And if I want to like erase it, that, like, that specific part, I just don't like it. Boom. Super easy, super convenient to find a specific part of an image without trying to go through <laughs> all the layers. So I highly recommend starting using that tool. And the next one is pretty inviting in my opinion. Uh, so we have all these panels, all this extra stuff. What if you don't want this? You just want to sketch. Well, for that, there's a new function. You go into here and you can go to switch to simple mode and boom, you don't have anything extra. Nothing is gonna bother you. It just comes with basic brushes and it just saves you so much time without trying to kind of go into each panel, trying to find the right brush and all that good stuff. And uh, I made the video about this if you want to check it out. But otherwise, I highly recommend trying out the simple mode. And if you want to go back, you can just click here, switch to studio mode, and it goes back into Clip Studio Paint. You can just jump from one to the other. It's super convenient, and I love that new mode that they added. The next one is my personal preference, and I just want to share why I'm using this. So in here, you can see the square, and the square is a little bit confusing to me because uh, you have one point that is white, uh, the other one is the color, but you have two black points, which means um, if you want to change the like, specific parts, it goes either here or here. And for me, it's just a little bit confusing and just takes longer time to adjust the colors. And if you go into the color wheel, you're going to see this little icon. You click on it and that way you only have three points, which is white, color and black. And it saves me so much time of working with color. So let's say I have a textured brush just like this. It has all these little intricate dots and textures and I want to erase this like I made a mistake. Well, you could use a eraser, but at the same time, it's not going to be the same because it's very, very digital. It's very, very harsh. But the best part is that you can use any brush you want as an eraser. So in here, you can see two uh, squares over here as well. And there's going to be a little line below. That's a transparency color. Um, not a lot of other programs have this. And if you click on it, you can use any brush you want as an eraser. Now it's going to work um, as a transparency, AK, you know, eraser. Uh, you can use any brush you want, airbrushing, anything. And uh, I think for the computer, the shortcut is X. Um, so that makes it super convenient to, for example, paint, paint, paint and then erase, 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 
and uh, keep the integrity of your piece and artwork within the same uh, style and the texture that you're using. And the next tip has nothing to do with painting exactly, but it just makes it convenient to use Clip Studio Paint specifically. If you go into this little icon, you can see that we have preferences and there's a lot of cool stuff you can change here. So for example, like the darker color of the interface or lighter color. Uh, but my thing that I like to change is undo levels. I think it starts at like 200 or something, especially for the iPad, it's like so much. And I usually don't undo that much uh, in my paintings anyway. So I like to keep it at 30. It makes the program run a little bit smoother. It doesn't collect as much memory uh, when you know working with big, big files. And uh, another thing that I want to mention is that you can also go into interface and there's going to be a little button that says switch to tablet interface. This will make the interface of your iPad a little bit more compact. And if you have this off, it's just going to look more like this. Uh, and if you prefer this, this is also awesome. You can customize it this way, but personally, I like the other way. And I think it's really just important uh, because iPads are just so small and some of the computers um, that I've been using, also tablets like usual MacBook or whatever, they're also screens are kind of small. So switching that little button makes all the difference in the world. And if you want to save even more space in here, you're going to be preferences, interface, show status bar. And if you just click that, it's going to remove the top part with like your battery or like whatever last application you've been using. So it's going to be even smaller than this. So <laughs> I think it just saves so much time and you can just hide the menu bar too. Boom. So now you have <laughs> all the space in the world to work and uh, don't worry about, you know, this uh, going away because all the buttons that are at the top over here, they're all over here as well. So you can see that all of these are the same exact functions as over here. So if you want to just save a little bit space and make it more compact, here's my tip. And the next tip will blow your mind. I promise you, um, I have lasso selected or let's say a rectangle, I go right there and you can see all of these functions right here, but the best part, you can change these. So if you go to this little icon gear, you click on it, you can add anything you want from menu commands, from pop-up palettes, or even auto action. So the action that I set up earlier, I can do fill my favorite color and click add and you close it. Now it's going to be living right next to this part. So if I click here, boom, it just created that auto action on my selection and it's really really amazing tool that will save you a ton of time all you have to do is just think of ways that you can use it for your painting Alrighty, well i spilled all the beans about clip studio paint i really hope you learned something in this video uh, please let me know if you have any other cool functions to share um, like this video or share it with other artist friends just to make sure that we kind of spread the knowledge and <laughs> have all the secrets out and about to everyone who's using clip studio paint um, I also wrote a small article for this video if you want a uh, written tutorial for this. But um, otherwise, happy painting. I really hope that your next piece is going to be better than the last. And just love your art and love yourself. Thank you for watching.